Hello and welcome back to Grim and Wim. Today we will be looking into the unsolved disappearance of Montel the Sean Acker, who, when he was only 19 years old, suddenly vanished on August 10th, 2011. I learned of his case on The Charlie Project, which is a resource that I love to use. Um, a lot of people are fairly familiar with The Charlie Project, but if you've never heard of it, they really have made it their mission to help with unsolved missing persons cases. And the details around this case are a bit confusing, and there is a depressing lack of evidence. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to cover this case. And I really didn't see a lot of coverage on his case. Um, I did a little bit of research trying to figure out if other uh, true crime people had seen his case, and it doesn't look like there really is much coverage out there. And so I really wanted to cover his case because it's been 13 years since he went missing. And while his family and friends are still searching, it seems like his case has basically run cold. And as always, I'm hoping that by covering his case, there will be more exposure to his story and someone who possibly knows something could maybe come forward and give the right information to the right people so that Montel and his whereabouts and what happened this night, everything is revealed and hopefully the family, no matter what the outcome, the family can have some closure. And so with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the case by first starting off by looking at Montel's personal history and just a little bit about him and his life before he vanished in 2011. Montel the Sean Acker, also known as Mookie, that was his nickname. Um, he is an African American male with short black hair, brown eyes. He stands at around 5'11", and at the time of his disappearance, he was about 19 years old. If alive today, he would be 31 years old. He is from Urbana, Illinois, but he actually went missing on route to Rontoul, Illinois. I think I'm pronouncing that right, either Rontoul or Rontau. Um, but either way, that's where he went missing in that part of Illinois. And Montel is actually a twin and the youngest of four siblings. He was very, very close to his family. In fact, he really seemed to have a very close network of friends and family. His mother, Levon, as well as, you know, other members of his family and friends, they continue to advocate for him and get the word out about Montel, hoping that someone will recognize him or that someone who knows something will speak up. I found a Facebook page called Please Help Find Montel Acker, and this was actually created by one of his friends, and I've actually seen his mother, Levon, um, post updates and things um, as well on the page. But if you look at this Facebook page, you can just see how loved Montel is. And so many friends and family have posted beautiful memories about the kind and loving person that Montel is. And his friends and family describe him as being very lovable and always able to make you laugh. When he vanished in 2011, it didn't appear that he had much of a presence on social media, at least none that I was able to find. I wasn't able to find um, a Facebook or an Instagram, um, but he also didn't own a cell phone at the time of his disappearance. So that could be why he maybe didn't spend 
a ton of time on technology. And thinking back in 2011, I know for me, I personally didn't have like a smartphone or anything like that. Um, I don't think I got a smartphone until college. But basically with the social media kind of being in its infancy and the fact that he didn't have a cell phone, that's more than likely why he didn't have a social media presence. Um, But with all that being said, here are some distinguishing features that Montel has. So both of his ears are pierced and he often wore studs in his ears. He also has two tattoos, one of um, the zodiac sign of a Capricorn, um, that one's on his chest, and then the other is a dragon on his left arm. From the pictures I was able to find, it seems like he typically kept his hair pretty short and neat. On the day he went missing, he was wearing studs in both of his ears, either a black or white t-shirt. It's been reported as either being black or white, um, and then dark blue skinny jeans. Now let's get into the timeline of this case and what we know about the night of his disappearance. From what we know about that day, it seems like it was a pretty normal day. That day, his mother sent him to the post office for an errand, and then he left his home on Division Avenue in Urbana, Illinois, to visit some friends in Rontoul, Illinois. And I looked up the distance between these two cities, and it's about a 20-minute drive. Apparently, the plan was that he was going to go out that night with a couple of friends for a tattoo, and it's not clear if he was getting the tattoo that night or if he was just like joining friends and like maybe one of his friends were getting a tattoo. It's not entirely clear. Um, But either way, according to his friends, they all went to this tattoo parlor and then they left at 11 p.m. without Montel. And when Montel's family in, you know, the coming days, they hadn't heard anything from him. And they began to worry because this was really not like Montel to not be in contact with them. And according to the police reports, Montel was officially reported missing to the Urbana Police Department on August 23rd, 2011. And from there, the investigation begins. The investigation into Montel's disappearance began with trying to get a hold of him. And like I stated before, Montel did not have a cell phone. So it's not like his family or friends could just call or text him to check up on him. And Montel is an adult. I mean, he was 19 years old. And so he's allowed to go wherever he wants. However, It is unusual for him to not be in contact with his family. In fact, that was one of the things that his mom in later interviews talked about a lot was that, you know, he had a twin and the fact that he wasn't even talking to his twin or reaching out, like that was unheard of. His friends claim that Montel had told them that he was going to take a Greyhound bus to Indianapolis via a Chicago connection. But how was he going to get to Chicago from Rontoul, Illinois? And the driving distance from Rontoul to Chicago is almost two hours. And he didn't have a car. He also didn't really have a ton of money on him. And so why was he going to Chicago and then to Indianapolis? Why would he even go to Indianapolis? Like who's in Indianapolis? And did he actually have a plan to go to Indianapolis through Chicago at 11 p.m. at night? Or is someone lying? These are the types of questions that 
the police investigative team and Montel's mother and, you know, his family, they're all asking these questions. Why would he even be going to Indianapolis? Montel hadn't said anything about traveling to Indianapolis to his mom, to his twin, or any of his other siblings. And this was definitely out of character for Montel. But without a cell phone or social media presence, no CCTV footage, or any activity on, you know, Montel's bank accounts, cards, you know, whatever, the police were really coming up short with a way to actually track his whereabouts. And when he did leave that day, he only had a little bit of money on him. And he really didn't bring any personal belongings. He didn't even bring a change of clothes, which is bizarre because if you're going to Indianapolis from Illinois and you're leaving at like 11 p.m., I don't know about you, but if I was spending the next day somewhere after having traveled on a bus, I would want to change. I mean, you know, that seems like most people would want to do that. And it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Despite what his friends claim about him wanting to go to Indianapolis that night, it really doesn't look like he planned to be gone very long. But as of right now, that's where the investigation ends, and there have been very few leads for the police to look into. That's one of the frustrating parts about this case is that there really aren't a ton of details. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to cover it, to hopefully have some additional coverage for Montel so that his family could get some answers on what exactly happened that night. So we're going to then now go into theories about what may have happened. And before discussing the theories, I do want to stress, as always, that these are theories and everyone is innocent until proven guilty, not guilty until proven innocent. And we can, of course, speculate, ask questions, but at this time, there are no confirmed suspects in this case, only persons of interest. The first possibility is that Montel left on his own and he made himself disappear. And this is always a, a possibility when you're looking into missing persons cases. There are examples of people that left and people were like, oh, it's totally not in their character to leave. They would have never just left their whole life behind. And then we come to find out that there are perfectly alive and well, living their life. They were just living a different life away from their friends and family. But the issue with this theory is that it just really isn't consistent with the person that Montel is. He wouldn't just up and leave his family behind. He was very, very close with his twin and his mom. And on top of that, if he was planning on leaving, why wouldn't he have brought more with him? I mean, if you're going to leave, you would think you would bring maybe at least a change of clothes, um, you know, personal belongings, things like that. It just seems really unlikely that he decided to run an errand for his mom and then go hang out with friends and then just disappear into the night never to be seen again on his own volition. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. The next theory has to do with the possibility that he ran into some kind of trouble while he was out. Perhaps after hanging with friends, he ran into a stranger with bad intentions. His friends apparently um, left him at the tattoo parlor at 11 p.m. And maybe, maybe he did have a plan to go to Indianapolis or maybe he had a plan to go back home or maybe he was hanging out more, you know, that night. Maybe he went to a bar, who knows. Um, but maybe 
he ran into a stranger who had bad intentions and the, the timing of it could have just worked out. And while this is a possibility, there are, you know, just weirdos out there, you know, there are serial killers out there, but Montel's body has never been recovered. So there is no evidence of foul play at this time. And while yes, you know, men can be the targets of serial killers, you know, Montel was, you know, 5'11", you know, he was like an average sized dude. And it doesn't appear, at least from the story that he had been drinking or was under the influence in any type of way. And so I find it a little bit less likely that he would have been like kidnapped or murdered by someone just while he was out and about. Again, it's not not a possibility, but it is a bit more unlikely. Then there's the friends that Montel was with that night. And this theory is really the theory that most people on the internet and, you know, web sleuths and stuff like that, and even family and friends I've seen on the Facebook page that one of his friends made for Montel that a lot of people are questioning what is up with this group of friends because it's very suspicious that they were the last people to see him alive. And now over a decade later, he still hasn't shown up. And we don't even know who these friends are. I wasn't able to find the name um, or names of any of the friends that he met up with that night. And it doesn't appear that their names were ever released to the public. And that could be for a few reasons, but I'm wondering if maybe someone has connections and they're being protected or perhaps the police did, you know, do their interviews and things like that and didn't find any reason to continue looking into the friend group. But there is definitely something suspicious about the story that they were telling that they went out with him that night and then they were all done for the night and he's going to Indianapolis at 11 p.m., which it's going to take, you know, two hours to drive to Chicago. So now we're at like 1 p.m. or 1 a.m., excuse me, and then continuing on to Indianapolis. Like that's a lot of travel time. And for what? Like what was in Indianapolis that was so important that he had to do it that night. And so again, there is hope that because we haven't found a body or, you know, any types of remnants of like what he was wearing that night, any, you know, there's no DNA evidence in this case at all. There is a possibility that maybe he is still alive out there, but there's also a possibility that maybe something happened that night with this group of friends and the people that he was with had something to do with his disappearance. And again, this is all speculative, but to me, it is suspicious when a group of people are the last people to see a person and then this person goes missing for over a decade and there's still no, you know, clues or any type of evidence as to whether he is even alive or if he's dead. I just, something about the whole situation that night doesn't sit well with me. And I just feel like if it was my friend, if I was out with my friend, you know, out at night and they went missing, I would be going out of my way to give as many details as possible. I would be trying to like retrace our steps that night or give, you know, predictions about what I think happened to that friend. And it just seems like this friend group is real tight lipped. And that to me is incredibly suspicious. 
I want to thank you for listening to Montel's case. And I know his family and friends are still desperate to find answers. So hopefully this will reach the right people who know something about what happened that night. And on the Facebook page, please help find Montel Acker. The last update was on February 3rd, 2022. And I'll put a link to that page as well as the Urbana Police Department, um, all the information for reaching out to the Urbana Police. I'll put all that information in the description box of this episode. So please check out both resources if you know anything about Montel's disappearance. Again, thank you for listening and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. It's goodbye for now, but I hope to haunt you again soon.